Grace and peace, beloved of God. Welcome to Sweetness of the Scroll. This is Rhonda Wagner, founder of Word of Encouragement Ministries. And here at Sweetness of the Scroll, we savor the sweetness of the Word of God. And we have been sharing thoughts with you from our recently self-published devotional, Kelby Chronicles Volume 2, The Sweetness of the Scroll, where we are sharing um, insights, tour insights. We, um, as a believer, um, spirit-filled believer, actually went on a journey with the Lord, which we call walking the Emmaus Road. We went on a journey with the Lord and spent a few years studying the Torah portions and going reading through the Torah just because we were really just looking for um, just seeking for a fresh way to come to the Word of God we had gotten into a place where we were in a really dry place in reference to studying the Word and um, we believe the Holy Spirit led us to start um, studying the Torah portions and so we studied the Torah portions and read through the Torah portions for about maybe a year and a half before we started um, sharing a little bit about them and if you get the devotional then I go through the whole testimony but basically if you even look back at some of the past portions you see where we started sharing some thoughts about the Torah portions and then we walked away from the assignment and so, really, um, our devotional and the remainder of these podcasts are us reclaiming our assignment and walking out our obedience before the Lord. Because we do feel like the Lord put it on our hearts to share um, our thoughts about the Torah portion. And so, if you've been listening, we hope that you've been blessed and that the Holy Spirit has been ministering to your heart through um, the living Torah, through the power of um, God's Spirit. We know Jesus is the living Torah. And when we come to the Word and we're having fellowship with Him in the Word, you know, that's our prayer, that you'll come to the Word and you'll have fellowship with with Jesus, with Yeshua, as you um, just discover some some hidden nuggets, some sweetness in the Word of God. And so I just felt like I would share that in case you're new to the broadcast. And so this week's portion is Nasso, which is translated as take or carry. And we're covering Numbers chapter 4, um, verse 21 through number 7, verse 89. So this is a pretty long portion. And actually, I recently listened to a new Torah teaching um, on Nassau. And if you've studied anything about the Hebrew language, the Hebrew language is such a dense language in the sense that there are multiple ways to translate words. You know, um, the Hebrew language is not just um, letters like our um alphabet but it's also there are also pictures and numbers that correlate with the the Hebrew alphabet and so there's ways in which you can translate there's multiple meanings to most Hebrew words and so I recently listened to um, a Torah lesson on this portion that translated um, Nesso as to make an accounting which brings a little bit more clarity to the portion as well as to lift or to elevate and that one really blew me away so maybe I'll share that in another season because that was really um, just a new way to see this Torah portion but um, take or carry and we know from the previous portion that the Lord Hashem had instructed Moses to number the people and so this second Torah portion is also um, continuing that assignment and here um, the Lord is instructing Moses to number the Levites as well and so we have in 
Numbers 4.21, the Lord said to Moses, Take a census also of the Gershonites by their families and clans, and count all the men from 30 to 50 years of age who come to serve in the work of the tent of meeting. And so that's where we get the translation for the portion. And the drop, the drop of honey, the drop of sweetness for this portion from our devotional is called the blessing. And in this Torah portion, we have the scriptural text for the Aaronic or priestly blessing. And so this is one of my favorite Torah portions. And um, it's so much, I mean, every portion has so much for you to um, delve into. But I'm just going to focus on the blessing for this particular portion. But before I get to that, I'm going to give just a few highlights of the other sections because, I mean, they're worth noting just in general. I mean, in the, the devotional, I don't go into a lot of depth on all of the portion because really it's just an insight into each portion and I share with you. Um, whatever the Holy Spirit had ministered to me um, in that particular portion, whatever the Holy Spirit had emphasized. And I mean, the blessing is really just so profound, but um, I don't want to neglect in these podcasts to just mention or highlight some of the other areas within the portion. And so in the portion of Nassau, we have some instruction for Levitical assignments. When you go through, starting with verse 21, you go through, you see the assignments for the Gershonites, the Marites, and the rest of the Levitical clans, um, what their assignments were. And then there is some teaching starting in Numbers 5 on keeping the camp pure, which if you've been listening to some of the other um, portions, that's kind of going back to Leviticus where we really focused on um, what's clean and unclean and um, not profaning the name of the Lord and so Hashem the Lord gives some more instructions regarding that Um, restitution for wrongs which is really interesting I hope to really discuss that in another podcast if the Lord you know has us to continue to do some of these teachings because it's not something that's really um, spoken about too much in most evangelical or which if if you want to say non-denominational I personally would consider myself a non-denominational Christian um, but it's not something that's really talked about too much restitution or confession you know making something right when you wrong someone or trespass against someone, making something right. And usually it's only, confession is really only discussed in, um, you know, Catholicism or going before a priest. But we see here in the Torah that it was something that the Lord commanded the people. It was a teaching. It was a mitzvot that when you have wronged someone or trespassed someone, you were to go to the person and confess. And you're also supposed to make restitution, um, if in all if at all possible. And we do have a reference in James that talks about, um, you know, confessing your faults one to another in the book of James in the New Testament. So, I mean, it's interesting to say the least. And then we have a really peculiar reference here to the the test of an unfaithful wife. Now, I haven't really studied this out, but I do mention it, um, Oh, not, I didn't mention it in the devotional, but it's, I mean, this is one of those places in scripture, this test for the unfaithful wife, where it's just like, um, there's so much Jewish commentary on it because it really is like a miracle sort of thing. It's a very mystical thing. It's almost, you can kind of compare it to, um, the red heifer because if there was a jealous man and, Sometimes it's called the test for for jealousy. I'm sorry. I'm just like kind of flim-flaming around with my books here. Um, 
the test for jealousy. If a husband were jealous or he thought that his wife was unfaithful, there was a test that was to be done and the wife would be taken before the priest and she would have to drink this water that the, the priest put dirt in from the tabernacle. But then he also wrote something on a scroll and he dipped it into the water. And the only way to be able to test whether the woman was unfaithful or not was if she drank the water and it became bitter and she actually would receive a curse if she was unfaithful and not being honest in or walking in truth regarding her her relationship with her husband and she would become barren but if she hadn't been unfaithful and she was being truthful um then there would be no curse and so it was a test that was given that would totally um exonerate the woman before her husband and the entire camp as well as you know produce a curse if she had done it but it was totally miraculous and I shared in another um, time when I was sharing some thoughts about this that it really demonstrates the lengths at which the father would the lengths that the father would go to to um, keep a marriage whole and together and I believe that if we had more teaching about um, the power of the marital covenant and the fact that when God said what he has joined together, let no man pull asunder, that if we had more teaching about it, you know, I don't know. Maybe there would be some uh, a change of heart regarding divorce. And it's not that that the Lord didn't allow divorce. We know Jesus taught about on divorce and Um, the New Testament, but it is a powerful example from scripture of the lengths that the father would go to, to restore a marriage. And, um, you have to really study it out because when the priest writes the curse on the scroll, he also writes God's name. And it says in the Jewish commentary that God allows for his name to be erased in order to make sure that the spirit of jealousy doesn't, you know, take hold of a marital relationship. And so, I mean, it's a really powerful teaching. And it's one of those places in scripture where it's so um, supernatural, mystical. There's lots of Jewish commentary. And it's just worth noting. And let's see, what else? In the chapter, we have the vow of the Nazarite which is also a very interesting read. We know Samson was a Nazarite, um, John the Baptist. And I also listened to another teaching that said that um, Jesus may have taken a Nazarite vow when he offered the Passover or what we call the Last Supper before his passion um, on the cross. I haven't studied it out, but it was a very interesting teaching nonetheless. And then we get to the priestly blessing. And the final chapter in chapter 7 is the dedication offering um, from the tribes. Little special note about that before I get to the blessing is chapter 7 is very long. It has lots and lots of repetition. But I did note in a devotional that Generally, when we get to these portions of scripture, if it's like um, genealogical list or, you know, list where there's lots of repetition, we think, I'm just going to skip over this part. But from my studies on Hebraic, um, our Hebraic roots and things like that, I've learned from um, the teachers that I follow that repetition in the Hebrew language means pay attention. Doesn't mean like it's not important, it's added emphasis. And like I mentioned earlier in the podcast, numbers mean something in the Hebrew language. So the numbers relating to these offerings all have significance. I haven't studied it out, but if you have something like a, um, a Jewish commentary with Rashi or the the Kumesh, then you could read in the commentary where it shows you, Rashi goes through and he explains what these different numbers signify and what they mean, but that's like really in-depth teaching, 
and I've mentioned many times before, I'm not a Torah scholar, and so I don't even elevate myself to that place. I don't, you know, have that level of knowledge, but I'm sharing it in the sense that if you wanted to pursue some deeper study, that you could do that. And it's for us to understand as, you know, more westernized believers that these things mean something and that's the power of studying um, the word and delving more into the Hebrew language I mean most of us now you know we go to Strong's and we study the Hebrew and we study the Greek but it's also important to understand the context about the culture and that's what I feel like studying Hebraic roots and studying the Torah does for us because we get a better understanding of the culture, which then in turn, when we read the New Testament, we understand that Jesus is a Jewish man and the first believers were Jewish men as well. And so even the New Testament has to be read in light of what they perceived as Jewish men and even the parables is so much that really could be escapulated from the New Testament that reflect back to the Torah and so just wanted to share that as well all those things that were dedicated and given from the tribes the numberings all of it is significant there's nothing in the Torah that is insignificant absolutely positively nothing and since we just um celebrated pentecost on sunday this is the torah portion that is generally read around the feast of shaviot the feast of shaviot is celebrating um the giving of the torah on mount sinai and in you know westernized christianity we call it pentecost which is um, the releasing of Holy Spirit upon the church in Acts 2. If you study it out, you'll see so that Acts 2 is actually a fulfillment of the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai. And that fire came down on the mountain, just like fire, tongues of fire came down on the people in Acts 2. I mean, it's just so powerful to learn and just opens up your understanding that our God is he's awesome like our father is the God of all universes of all the cosmos of of everything in that his word is alive and it's living and it's powerful and it's transformative and it just it's so sweet that is why we share our thoughts about the sweetness of the scroll that if anyone listens to any of this and just delves into a deeper understanding of God's word and gets deeper revelation of Yeshua and desires to walk on that Emmaus road where we allow the Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus to us in a new way from the scriptures that's intimacy that's fellowship that's what what Jesus really did for us. He didn't just save us from heaven. He brought us into the holies of holies. He brought us back into fellowship with the Father where we could sit and feast at the table, you know, and, you know, have the manna from heaven that we could hear the word that's proceeding from the Father's mouth. I mean, that is so rich and so precious. And so now... Let's talk a little bit about the blessing. So the blessing, the priestly blessing is found number six, starting in verse 22. And where's my other Bible? I've got about three books sitting here in front of me, but I'm going to just read it from my new King James. And then I'm going to read an amplified translation of it so that you understand why this is the drop, the sweetness for this portion. Okay, I'm going to get there. I should have had this. Okay, here we go. 
And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. All right, and so as I said before, this is one of my favorite portions of of um, the Torah, and I just love this portion of scripture. And I share a little bit in um, the devotional of how I think um, we the word blessing has come become a little bit cliche in a lot of. Christian circles, maybe not all, but just in general, and that, you know, we, we say blessing over our food, and, um, you know, it's just a little bit cliche, like the power of the word and the power of its meaning can get lost in the sauce, and so it's important for us to look back at what a blessing was in, um, in the Hebraic sense, I mean, the blessing was a powerful thing that was spoken from a father over his children. It was prophetic. It was alive. It was um, generational, you know, and when we study, you know, the blessing that Jacob spoke over his sons, we still can look to scripture in Genesis and see where that blessings, those blessings are still being fulfilled. They're still being walked out in our modern day culture. And um, I think I referenced the blessing over Judah in the last portion. And so we really should be um, taking time to meditate on what did the Lord mean when he said to bless the people and what does it mean to speak a blessing to release a blessing if we believe the word is alive that it's sharper than any two-edged sword that God created the entire created universe with his words and that our words are creative our words have power we have the power to bless and we have the power to curse then we should be very selective about our choice of words but then not just to um, focus on the negative where we want to be mindful of our words and to speak words that are encouraging and that you know of are of a good report but understand that we have the power to release blessing over people and so I think that that's such an important takeaway from this um, Torah portion and so I mean, we could speak a blessing. We bless our food and we believe that it's sanctified as we bless it. But we have the power to bless our children, you know, in um, during the Shabbat, which today's the Shabbat. The the priest of the home, the father blesses his wife and he blesses his sons and he blesses his daughters and they speak a blessing. Now, generally, they speak a blessing that um, speaks the blessing of the sons of Ephraim and Manasseh. And then um, I can't think of how they reference the blessing for the daughters, but I think it's like the blessing of Sarah, you know, the women of faith in in the word. But this is done weekly in families that are Torah um, observant or Torah conscious. And it's just such a powerful thing to um speak words of blessing over people that you know we love in our family people that God has assigned to us people that God has revealed you know we have a sphere of influence it's like speaking a prophetic word it's like speaking a word that is alive and active and can become alive and active in their lives and I you know can testify of how this particular um portion of scripture has impacted my life when the Lord gave me the revelation even really before I started studying Torah in depth the Lord gave me the revelation of this scripture because I was reading through it and I used to um, look through I used to be a moderator for a prayer call and you know we would have times where as the Lord would lead us in prayer we always wanted to use scripture because scripture is powerful and it's God's word But we also would look for, you know, 
a blessing or a benediction to say. And the Lord would give us different benedictions. There's lots that are in, you know, the New Testament. But, of course, we would often come to this one. And the Lord showed me, you know, don't just stop at verse 26. Verse 27 says, so they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. And I started to meditate on that. And the Lord began to show me that, you know, when we speak this blessing in faith, you know, knowing that this was the prayer that God gave, that Hashem gave, that the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, all caps, gave to his people. I mean, you can equate it to our father or the Lord's prayer that Jesus taught. I mean, this was how the Lord instructed Aaron and the priesthood to bless the people. He said, when you release this, you put my name on them. You know, the the people be, are my possession. And then I began to really, you know, use the blessing as the Lord you know, would inspire me when praying for others, but specifically when praying for my children. And, you know, most of my children are out of school now. The young adults don't have one child in school now. But when they were all in school, every morning I would bless them. Every morning I would release the blessing because the blessing is like a hedge of protection. It's like it's the Lord's name being released over them. And then it's, you know, we can't always be every place with our, our children. He's, he's their responsibility. We're stewards of what God has given to us. And it was a way for me to, you know, release not just worry, care, whatever concerning my, my children, but to release some to the Lord. And I mean, I have two children with special needs. And so, I mean, it really became a way for me that the Lord ministered to me that his, his, my children were in his love and care, that he was watching over them and that I could be, um, I could really be at peace and at rest knowing that, that his name was upon them. And I mean, I can just give testimony of, of testimony of his faithfulness. And then my children can even testify, you know, of how they're trying to run out the door and I'm saying, wait, 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 so they don't miss the bus to release the blessing over them and I still do it today um, even as our kids become older and you know they get to the age of accountability their will is involved you know there's we have to be more mindful of the way that we pray for them you know because they're have to follow God's leading as they're walking out their obedience to the Lord. And, you know, sometimes people, we can get into witchcraft when we pray, you know, against people's wills and things like that. And we never want to be walking in that arena. You know, we always want to be in the light, but we have to be mindful. I think praying blessings and releasing blessings and releasing God's word over people is a way that we could never really steer wrong. Just releasing blessing and speaking blessing. And allowing God's word to work in people's heart and um, his his truth to work in their heart and in their life. And so I just wanted to share a little bit about that. That if you've never meditated on the blessing or if you've never prayed it for your family or maybe even for your adult children or for your those in, in whom the Lord has given you um, authority or you intercede for people that you might want to add it because it's such a powerful, powerful truth in releasing um, this blessing. And God is faithful. You know, it says in Psalms that the that um, the Lord watches over his word to perform it. And, you know, he has angels and ministering spirits that hearken after the voice of his word. And so we have to. Um, utilize the things that God has given to us. Last portion, I talked about the power of our praise. Here, it's the power of our, our spoken blessing and utilizing those things that God um, ordained for us to to use to change atmospheres and change. The, his word is what puts people on the right path, the path that's grown brighter and brighter into the perfect day. And so let me read to you 
um, an amplified version of the Aaronic or Priestly Blessing from its Hebraic source. It says, Adonai, the infinite being who was, is, and always will be, the one who causes being, he will kneel before you, presenting gifts, and he will guard you with a hedge of protection. Adonai will illuminate the wholeness of his being towards you, bringing you order and harmony, and he will provide you with love, sustenance, and friendship. Adonai will lift up from you any and all burdens and carry them for you, and he will carry the wholeness of his being towards you, and he will set in place all you need to be whole and complete that peace that shalom i mean it's so powerful if you have the devotional which is available on kindle the link should be there for you to um access it but i mean it's something to meditate on and i had a time when the lord had um you know began to reveal this to me and i follow a teacher dr chad foster um who taught me basically everything that I've been learning regarding Torah. And um, when he shared with us this amplified version of the Hebraic blessing, you know, I had shared it with another person and I actually utilize it in the things that the Lord has called me to, you know, release and to publish. I always put the blessing um, in anything that, the Lord calls me to publish because I just feel like it's important. It's, it's that important. And so when I was sharing with this other person about this blessing, the person got a little bit offended about the Lord bowing down. And I I didn't really address it at that point. I just left it alone because I didn't want to offend the person. But as the Lord ministered to me, what he showed me is that, you know, a religious spirit would see that, you know, why would Adonai bend down? Why would he kneel die down? Why would he become subservient? But that's not what the understanding is. The understanding is that we have a father who came down. We have a father who came down in the form of Jesus. We had a father who, I mean, I just saw the picture of a father and a little child, a toddler, and wanting to bless and to give gifts. You know, you wouldn't make the child try to jump up, you know, and um, try to reach up and say, oh, you can have it if you can reach it. No, that's not our father. Our father kneels down and he presents gifts to us. Jesus came down and he gave gifts to men. Even at Mount Sinai, the portion at this, this, um, the holiday Mount of Shavuot, of Pentecost, where this portion is read, God came down on the holy mountain. I mean, he came down, there was, he came down in a cloud. The whole mountain was encompassed in his presence and God spoke and released the Torah and the people heard God speak in multiple languages according to Jewish tradition I mean our father came down and so I get this picture of the father kneeling down to his child and that's not that's the father closing the gap the separation and that's what um I really share in the devotional of how um our God, the most high God, kneels down to us presenting gifts. And the heart of a child receives those gifts from a father. And that um, when the father came down, he demonstrated his love for us in Christ Jesus. And this is what our father did. He came down and he demonstrated his love for us in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And now... We are his children. We are his possession. We are heirs, joint heirs with Christ Jesus. We receive all that the Father is. Um, I mean, it says we're in Corinthians that really the, the natural mind, religious mind, the natural mind can't even perceive the things that God has so freely given to us that 
the things that God has so freely um, bestowed upon us that those things are discerned by the spirit. And when you read that in um, a book, it's either first or second Corinthians two, you know that that's where it says that. And we know like we have the mind of Christ, like these are things that are discerned by the spirit. But I mean, if you just meditate on that, meditate on the picture of our father just kneeling down and presenting to us all that we need, our wholeness, our healing, that he's the hedge of protection around us, the fullness of all that he is, the one who is, the one who was, the one who is to come, just encompassing us and that we are his temple. I mean, if you just even think about that, that's what the Pentecost of Acts 2 means, that not only did he come down on Mount Sinai to tabernacle with the people, but he came down in Acts 2 to tabernacle, that we are his tabernacle. We are his habitation. And he comes down and he indwells us, that that same fire he has given to us in our innermost being, that same fire is living in and dwelling in us and that we become this living flame we become this torch we become this thing that he utilizes to transform this earth to transform the world so that his kingdom just is the kingdom that's in us comes out of us and it swallows up everything that's not like him it just swallows up everything that's darkness that's what it means for the kingdom to be manifesting out of us in out into the places that he's called us to be. You know, it's such a powerful thing. And so when we release that blessing, his name is upon us. We're his special possession. We're his chosen, his priesthood. And then we have this, we become this living flame, this living flame, this hot, fiery presence of who he is his his temple his his tabernacle his living tabernacle wherever we are we're able to manifest all that he is and so usually I end um with the blessing but I pray that that you'll meditate on this and that you'll meditate on um releasing blessing the blessing that he's put upon you what it means to um, receive the gifts that he's given. And uh, I pray that the Holy Spirit would just just minister this word to you in such a profound way. Um, usually in a devotional, uh, I end with a breath prayer, breath prayer, which is just like a short prayer. I love to pray. It's a short prayer. And with a breath prayer. And the breath prayer for this particular portion is the blessing and so I'm going to release the blessing as I always do in faith and I ask Holy Spirit to minister its truth so powerfully to every person that hears this and that even during this week where we just celebrated the feast of Shavuot and the feast of Pentecost that that there would be a tangible fire from the presence of God and Holy Spirit upon those who listen and those who um, just act in faith, just act in faith to begin to release blessing over people that we would just be a conduit father of your presence and of your of your fire and a manifestation of all that you are and all that you've given to us in Christ Jesus I just have faith for that father I just believe for that father for every listener for every person that'll listen um not only today but whenever Lord that they'll receive just a fresh baptism of your presence and of your fire father God and so I leave this blessing with you now, that the Lord bless you, that the Lord keep you, that the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, that the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, his shalom, his wholeness, his completeness, nothing missing, nothing broken. In Jesus name. Amen.